Hello, I'm Gwyn. My special area is peer mediation and I'm here at Kingswood Primary School today to see how they're getting on with the programme we set up 18 months ago. When I first came to Kingswood School in South London to help the learning mentor set up peer mediation, it was very new in schools, but it's now becoming increasingly popular. Peer mediation is a conflict resolution tool that schools can use to help pupils sort out some of their own problems by themselves. Support staff and learning mentors like Sarah Harris are ideally placed to run it. Peer mediation is really important to my role as a learning mentor. When I first came to this school, I really noticed that there were a lot of issues between children in the playground at lunchtime. We tried a lot of strategies and I worked with the lunchtime supervisors to come up with ideas about what we could do. And I really felt that peer mediation was something that could work. Today I'm going to see how it's working here. I'll observe one of Sarah's maintenance training sessions, see how the mediators are working in practice, and find out a bit about how mediation can help them with their secondary transfer. Hi Gwen, how you doing? Hi Sarah, I'm fine, and you? Good, come on in, we're in here. Thanks. But first we're going to have a look at how it all got started. OK, so I've got this tape that uh, you made 18 months ago in the original training. And, and so how many of them are we using now? We have, uh, originally we've had 20 which we selected and I continued the training with. Some of those have chosen not to do it anymore because they feel it's too much commitment for them. When I sat down to select the children, I had an idea in my head that I was going to select children who would benefit from peer mediation training. This is a school that had a lot of behavioural issues, so a lot of the children I selected themselves did have behavioural issues. So here I was faced with a group of children who not only had difficulty listening to each other, but also had difficulty listening to the adult who was speaking in front of them. So here are some children that are mediating with us now. And, uh, so they've stayed the course? They've stayed the course. Peer mediation can reach children who do have behavioural needs, but I think you need a, a very good balance of children within the group. And now we have a group of very confident, very highly skilled peer mediators who provide a really valuable service in the school. Sarah's current group of about 14 peer mediators are all from Year 6. This is one of their regular top-up training sessions. Shall we get started? OK, so I'm going to say good morning to Kaylee. It's important once you've completed the initial training that the training is ongoing because even though the children have developed their listening skills, they have uh, good empathy for each other, they're good at trusting each other, you need to give them opportunity to go back to the basics, keep them on their toes and keep them at the heart of what peer mediation really is. Some of us are still a little bit asleep. Right, we're going to keep working on our listening skills. We're going to split you into pairs and one of you is going to be A and one of you is going to be B. A, you're going to stand up in front of B and you're going to tell B three of your favourite foods. So A's, would you like to stand up in front of B's? I like ribs, lamb and beef. Rice, coleslaw and sweet coffee. Okay, now B's, you're going to stand up in front of A's and you're going to tell them three of your favourite music groups. And go. Like, um, Asha, um, This Is Child and Cray David. Anyone like to start who can remember what their partner said? Okay, Daniel. July said his three favourite bands were D12, G Unit, and Defra. Fantastic. Daniel said his three favourite. Peer mediation fills a marvellous gap in schools. Parents urge children to stand up for themselves by kicking back or calling names back. The school says, tell the teacher. What we're trying to do is develop a culture where children stand up for themselves without copying bad behaviour or without bothering a teacher. How did it feel when it was coming to your turn to remember what your partner had said? It felt scary. How, why, what was scary about it? I thought I might forget it, forget thought, what she said. Yeah, were you worried about how Sicalia might feel? You were. OK, next activity. You're going to say a sentence, but you're going to attach a feeling with the sentence. Now, let's just chuck around some feelings. What kind of feelings do people experience? Sophie. Sad. OK, so sad is one. Sicalia. Lonely. Lonely. Here, we're giving them a language to talk about emotions. 
so that they can develop their impulse control. Confused, yeah. A lot of aggression Worried. in schools comes because they can't talk about it. They don't have a vocabulary to talk about Moving it. around, deny. Guilty. Guilty, right. Holding on to all of those feelings that we've just thrown around the circle, we're now going to do an activity where you're going to turn to the person next to you and you're, I'm going to give you a sentence and you're going to choose one of those feelings. So the sentence is, today at lunchtime somebody stole my lunchbox. Someone stole my lunchbox today. Somebody stole your lunchbox today and I can see that you're feeling upset. Great, you're echoing what the person is saying. But now let's start to really push our skills like we've been training to do, where you're going to really understand what they're saying and you're going to try and get a feel for how they're feeling and, and repeat that back to them. So let's move on. Someone's taken my lunchbox. Someone, someone has misplaced your lunchbox and you feel, you feel angry. Let's, let's put that to the group. If you were looking at Christopher's face, would you say he was feeling angry? He, he looks a bit nervous because he's, um, he's holding on to his lip. Marcus, have a real look at what Chris is saying and the way he's saying it to you as well. Someone's taken my lunchbox. Um, someone, someone has um, stolen your lunchbox and you, you feel... Yeah. Great guys, can you see how we really need to focus on trying to understand what they might be saying to us, what they might not be showing us. So we're going to move into some role plays now, but Gwen's going to come in and she's going to talk to you. She's going to talk to you about the Sarah model and how it fits into our peer mediation practice. Okay, who can remember what the S stands for in Sarah, yeah? Shut up, own ideas and welcome. Well, Sarah's an acronym. It's yeah. really just five steps. It tells them they've got to stop their own ideas about things. They've got to actively listen. They've got to be able to repeat to show they've heard. And then they've got to ask the people to, to come up with their own solutions, making sure with the H in Sarah that no one will get into trouble with the solution that's been generated. So we help them check if it will work. OK? OK, so keeping those in mind, can we all remember those? And they're there to remind you. So we're going to practice now by having a role play. And two are going to be mediators and two are going to be our disputants. OK, would you like to start? Hello and welcome to mediation. My name's Daniel. This is Kaylee. What's your name? Chanel. The training presents a set of skills to children. The first skill is gaining rapport. How do they make the person feel welcome and that they can trust them? The second thing they've got to do is show how fair they are by treating each of the two people with the problem equally. And then, of course, the key is listening. So what you're saying is you're a really good boy and you're always at the front of the line first and Chanel come and pushed you and swat you, so you told the teacher. I'm guessing you're feeling angry. Then we must go on to problem solving nice skills, yeah. helping each see that the problem really from the other's perspective rather than their own. Can I question you about that? No, that's not fair. Yeah. What question can you ask them when they cannot find a solution? What will make you happy? What will make you happy? You take it in order. In playtime, she go in the front, and at lunchtime, I go in the front. Chanel, do you agree with that? Yes. Well done, give them a clap. It's lunchtime now. Time for peer mediators to get back into the real world and put their skills to work. Now that we have a group of trained peer mediators, the system works that we meet once a week on a Monday and we put together a rota for that week and we decide who can work that week because a lot of the children have other commitments in the school. They're in year six, they have their sets, a lot of them are involved in sports clubs. So it's about working around them as well and still giving them a life. Three girls have a problem with him. But the great thing about peer mediation is it gives children choices. When they're having a problem with one of their friends in the playground, they can decide whether they want the help of an adult or to go to have mediation.
Welcome to Peer Radiation. Um, my name is Christopher and this is Leanne. What is your name? Luxia. And yours? Patrick. Do you want to sort this problem out without anyone getting into trouble? Yeah. So, what's your problem and who would like to go first? Me. Okay, so would you like to go first? Or do you yeah. mind if she goes first and then you can have a draw say after? Yeah? Um, when Uncle Girl said, um, we have to sort these boys out because, because they was being rude to us, and so we, we had to bounce the ball, but we wasn't hitting them, and he pushed me on the wall at the boys' toilet. Okay, the person asked you to get the boys, yeah? So you done it, and they, and they pushed you against the boys' toilet. Okay, what's your side of the story? I knew what I was doing, and that too. And he pushed me on the wall, so... And he too. I like the arc and wait until he's finished. Yeah? OK, come on. He was lying because I didn't take the bouncy ball. So you say that she's lying and you never took the bouncy ball? OK. So I can see that you're both feeling upset. Am I right? OK. So do you have a solution to sort this out? Do you, mind, do you mind if she goes first? For him to stop um, 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 troubling her. Are you OK with that? Or do you have another one? Yeah, you're OK with that? So the solution is that you, you, you want him to stop troubling you, yeah? Do you agree with that? OK, would you like to shake hands on it? They're doing the job by themselves and when the problems arrive, they bring them in and they sort it out. However, they know that I'm always there to support them in the process and at the end of lunchtime we discuss any issues that may have arisen. And how did it go? How did you find the mediation went today? Um, I think it was okay. It was okay? Yeah. What about you Chris? Uh, I find um, some bits uh, that I could understand and some bits that I couldn't because they were just um, uh, uh, disrupting each other. So they, and how did you deal with that? Uh, we just um, told them to listen to each other first. Feedback from schools like Kingswood tells us that peer mediation is making a difference. It dramatically reduces those playground disputes that often spill over into classroom learning time. OK, so you guys can go off to class then. Yay! Peer mediation also has an impact on pupils transferring to secondary school. This afternoon, Sarah has invited some Year 10 mediators to run a workshop for her Year 6 group. This role play is going to be very different because this time the media is going to be making mistakes and you guys should have good listening skills. So you're going to use those skills and you're going to work out when we make mistakes. And when you do, you have to shout freeze. Schools report that both trained mediators and those pupils who have used the system in primary school benefit from it in secondary school. There they can apply the skills to stand up for themselves effectively in potential bullying situations. Oh. Please. Please. What am I doing wrong? Um, you was fe um, feeling bored and you wasn't looking at um, the person. From when I first introduced peer mediation into school 18 months ago, it's been a very long journey. But I feel that we're in a place now where it's working for the children, they understand what it means and they're really appreciating the results that they're getting from peer mediation. Well done everybody. The skills are good. You guys are listening very well. Good. Congratulations.